Good morning, this is Stuart Davidson, your friendly QS. I just wanted to jump on this morning really to talk about how I developed my business from probably around 2016. I kind of changed the business plan. I thought it might be helpful to some of you in your businesses at the moment that may have office overheads, um, staff overhead, staff furloughed and that kind of thing. Uh, I'm not saying this is right particularly for you, but I just wanted to tell my story because I think the world's changing. Uh, A lot of staff are now, a lot of people working from home. So if you're working from home in front of a computer, really you could be working from anywhere in the world. So what what I did in 2016, I, I was running my quantity surveying business from 2010. And so I had an office and uh, uh, an office overheads, et cetera, et cetera. And what I found was that the overheads of the business were very high. The admin of the business was very high. What with the uh, the, the red tape for uh, uh, PAYE and um, HR and all of these things, all very important things. But when you're running a small business, it can be quite overwhelming, you know. And uh, if you get a downturn, what I found, I got, a, uh, you know, every now and again, I got a downturn. And sometimes I found that I was paying for the overheads, the staff, etc., etc., out of my own pocket. And um, there's me driving around in a 17-year-old car. And the staff have got nice new cars, take holidays, have the weekends off, which is fine, you know. And I'm not, you know, we've had some good staff, but that is the way that it was. And um, so after one downturn, I thought to myself, well, look, you know, what am I going to do about this? You know, there must be a different way to build up a small business. <clears throat> we were paying more income tax, uh, corporation tax than some of the large businesses. Some of the large banks <clears throat> and large corporates are paying very low levels of uh, corporation tax. And we were paying almost a perfect 1% difference. I think at the time we were paying 20%. 20%, which is small business rate, and everyone else is paying 21%. But at the end of the day, people like Barclays and, you know, other businesses, which you could probably reel off, uh, were paying less than 1% to the UK. And I thought, wow, what do I do about this? And so what I decided to do is to outsource. Um, I shut the business down. I shut the, I shut the office down. And I decided to outsource from that point because most of what we do, a quantity surveyor's role, uh, 80% of it is um, it is behind a computer, to be honest, and that's a lot of jobs these days. So I decided to start outsourcing 2016, and we uh, I out- started to outsource to India and Hyderabad. There was some engineers, uh, civil engineers out there. Uh, there was Arnie, Bob and Kishore who started to do quantity surveying work and programming work and uh, we started to build a relationship up and then we I, what I started to do was to build systems and build systems so that I could outsource uh, my work and eventually uh, it grew to a six figure business through outsourcing and the business is still uh, uh, growing it's still it's still healthy at this point in time, I'm very, very fortunate as a business that uh, um, none of the staff, I don't have staff that are furloughed um, and uh, I don't have the overheads. And so we're a business that uh, really is is kind of with, with no work, even if no work's coming in, we're kind of on ice and then we're ready to go as soon as work comes in. So what we've done is we've got the, the staff, the outsourced staff in India, uh, all the guys live and uh, work. Uh, they, they live in and around Hyderabad. We have a central office in Hyderabad, and as you know, India is on lockdown at the moment. So, pretty much, we've got uh, we've had to kind of close the office down as such, and uh, everybody's working from their homes. So they're locked down in their homes at the moment. But what we've done is we've we've upgraded their internet where we can. So basically, we've got staff there that are uh, still working uh, not furloughed uh, ready to go so we've got work that they're working on they've got their upgraded internet and we're helping them to get the, the hardware software internet into into the homes where they are and it's not really affected the way that we can deliver our service and what we found is as well what I've done with with my model and I've developed it since 2016 so I've had a few years to develop the outsourcing model and 
what I found is systems are really important. Quality management systems become really important. And uh, a central hub that everyone logs into in terms of the CRM, the quality management, the business workflows and processes, uh, that can all be done in the cloud. So that's pretty much what we've got. And what we've got is a, well, really, it's a global virtual office. And I've kind of been working and myself and the guys have been working on that concept more and more. And now we've got to a point where we can outsource the outsourcers. And we, so, so the work is outsourced. And it's kind of, you know, sometimes when you think about outsourcing, you think it's arm's length, but but really, you know, the difference between outsourcing and, and employees are really around administration type of contracts. But it, from a personal relationship, a business relationship, a working relationship, there's no difference to whether somebody's how somebody's contracted if they're contracted on an outsourcing based contract or they're they're contracted on an employee p a y e or a freelance that's that's just the, the 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 detail of the contractual arrangements but but when you're working together it's about relationship it's about systems it's about understanding the business understanding your clients so we've got to a point now where all my work is outsourced, so we have an outsourced model. Uh, up to the lockdown, we had 16 people uh, in, in the business through outsourced, uh, through the outsourced model. But what we've taught the guys to do now, what the model has stepped on to one level further, it's not just one level of outsourcing. So we've got the outsourced model, but from that outsourcing, that outsourced model, we're now outsourcing from there further. So we're getting different structured layers of of outsourcing. And the reason we can do that is because of systems and the systems we put in place. But the great advantage of that is, is we can now find skills, expertise, wherever that is in the world. So we could have a quantity surveyor sitting in Dubai. We could have a project manager sitting in, in the US. And they what they do is they log into our systems they go through the QMS, they communicate with us, they use the same filing systems, so we can deliver the same level of service, we can get across to them what our our vision, our mission is, and they kind of, really, it's a system to help them to slot in. So the wonderful thing about that is, is that, you know, we haven't necessarily got to look for our resource locally, we haven't necessarily we don't necessarily need our resource to come into the office so we have a virtual office so we do have zoom meetings we've been doing that for since 2016 we have zoom meetings we have um notes that we use on our crm system so everyone logs in there they're working on a project any s- significant key developments or changes that happens on a project or conversations that take place they're just noted down. So from my perspective, being the business, running the business, all I need to do is to go into the system, log into a particular project, and I can get the full history, the story of that project, what's changed in that project, where we are, what our delivery is, who's working on it, what the sign off says, what the, what the, um, the quali- how the quality management is, is there any, um, is there any non-conformances? Have we dealt with it properly? You know, so... But the exciting uh, thing for me is the next step level. So from outsourced to India, from India to outsourced to other parts of the world, really. It could be the UK. It could be somewhere in Europe. It could be somewhere in in the US, could be somewhere in the Middle East. Wherever that talent is and we can build relationships with professionals, we can do that to deliver the quality information uh, quality product that we need for our clients. Now we had a, a project actually just before the lock, lockdown and we, well it was actually no, round about the lockdown because we were starting to, the guys were starting to work from home, we were getting them up and running and uh, getting their internets, uh, internet uh, um, upgraded and that kind of thing so they could still log in and still work 
And uh, we thought, well, while we're going through that change, we had a project came, come in. And what we did, we, we had a fully qualified MRICS surveyor to help, you know, we, we could outsource and we, we said, right, we've got a project coming in, need this work doing. And this guy was in another part of India, lived in, in another part of India. And uh, uh, we, we just got him logged into the system. We got the onboarding done within a day or two. And all of a sudden, you know, we're going through a period where our guys were getting getting themselves moved out, moved home, getting the things upgraded. So there's a few days where I suppose they were out the loop a little bit. And using our outsourcing model, we were able to um, to get the work done seamlessly. So the client didn't know any diff- different uh, in terms of, uh, you know, the, the nuts and bolts of the work that was was um, being delivered, we still had the our our client facing person dealing with that client, so that was a seamless uh, client uh, uh, client contact, if you like. Um, but what it, the good thing about it was, it worked really really well. And so I, I would say, you know, if you're sitting here at the moment and you're a business owner and you're thinking about, you know, what model could I use? you know, what model could I use going forward, it might be worth thinking about um, an outsourcing model, you know, and out the good, the beauty of an outsourcing model is that you can outsource to your existing, you can even outsource to existing staff, reduce your overheads, you could, you could outsource locally or nationally, you can outsource to anywhere in the world. And once you've got your team, your core team, your core outsource team, your admin management team, you can then uh, use those guys to outsource further to acquire the skills that you need to deliver your service and product. Uh, But I think it comes down to uh, a number of things. It's really you do need to think about your systems. It's it will only really work if you've got systems in place, you've got set workflows in place you've got a good robust quality management system in place and you're keeping in touch and you're building relationships keeping in touch every day having meetings having uh you know getting on the on the calls just building a relationship like you would if if somebody was coming into the office so i think that's really the key to it so that is something that's worked for us i mean it's you know, I'm quite fortunate that I don't have the office overheads that I would have done pre-2016. Uh, we do have the office in Hyderabad and, and uh, what we've done there, we've uh, it was quite a large office and we, we refurbished it because we'd gone from Arnie, Bob and Kishore's uh, front room to, an, uh, uh, to a little office and then we grew, um, must have been early 2019 to slightly... Uh, 2018 to slightly bigger office 12 person office and then last year 2019 to a 20 per 26 person office Uh, but what we've done because of the current situation well just before that we 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 um we've cornered it off and we've um kind of mothballed it a little bit we did we did manage to um outsource some of the desks you know a a, um safe but, but i think that's that's now uh, closing down but it's a lower cost overhead than it would be if we had an office in in the UK but pretty much it's a model that can sit there and we can we we can switch on and we can switch off uh really pretty much how how and when we want in in a way uh but you know we're 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 open for business we are um you know we are busy we 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 we're geared up for for uh, carrying on you know and um and they're working so hopefully this is a model that uh, i think is a model that more and more people will adopt uh, but it's worked it's worked quite well for us but just wanted to share that uh in the current situation you know have you thought of outsourcing have you thought of outsourcing your outsourcing and building not only a local business, but building your business globally and taking advantage of global skills, global expertise, and of course UK expertise, because there are things that the uh, that you get locally in in the UK, things that you 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 want people that are uh, are well versed in 
in UK culture for certain things and UK tax laws, accountancy laws and, and that kind of thing. But that's not to say it can't be done from abroad. It's not to say that the core skills can't be, uh, people can't be trained in that from abroad. So there you go. That was something I just wanted to share with you. So this is Stuart Davidson, your friendly QS, signing off for now. And I'll see you in the next video. But please do put your comments below if you're interested in outsourcing your business, outsourcing your business abroad or outsourcing your outsourcing and building a model. Let me know in the comments below. You know, I'd be, be only too happy to have a conversation and talk to you on how that worked for us and how it might uh, benefit you. So this is Stuart Davidson signing off. Have a great day and I'll see you shortly. Cheers.